Hey everyone, how you doing today? So I wanted to do this quick video because I'm seeing the evolution of the one rental at a time story, uh, which again is something I created hopefully to inspire, you know, busy professionals and folks with full-time jobs and busy family responsibilities that yes, you too can get into buy and hold rentals, you know, be a landlord, conservatively finance, and you too can have a better financial future. This has been going on now for probably, let's call it 18 months. Uh, and part of the output of that is I've actually started buying distressed houses and uh, paying cash for them and then fixing them up and helping busy professionals buy what I've called pride of ownership rentals. Some, some people call them turnkey. Uh, but I thought I would you know, kind of summarize some of the conversations I've had, put together a quick presentation on why uh, investors are buying and are very happy with the pride of ownership rentals we are putting together. It, uh, it's kind of thrilling. I'll admit, you know, working the whole process, finding a distressed asset, negotiating it, putting a cash price down, going in with contractors, getting multiple bids, you know, running the whole process. But the end is perhaps the most exciting when I see, you know, see someone that could have been us 15 years ago, buying their first or their second or their third rental home, knowing that that will help improve their financial future. It's, it's pretty cool. So let's, uh, let me share what, uh, what I put together and we can talk about uh, each of them. Move this out of the way. Go into slide share mode. Here we go. All right. So why do you, why you should consider pride of ownership rentals or why have others already bought them? Uh, I thought I would uh, share with you what they said. First and foremost, I first talked about this actually in our book. And I didn't really appreciate this when I started, but um, I wasted a lot of cash in the beginning. And frankly, we could have been at least 50%, if not 100% larger, if we had a greater appreciation for our cash. I made the mistake of you know, buying cheap and then doing all of the repairs. You know, today, that would be called you know, Burr, uh, but financing was different. The timelines were different. No one was doing it. So I was buying cheap, 20% down then spending all the cash to repair. And then, you know, I had a decent cash flow house, but I, I, I couldn't buy more, right? Because we had used all of our cash. So in today's environment, um, you know, it's, 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 it is absolutely a mistake and you'll see going forward, right? Conserve your cash, use your cash wisely, and you will be in a much better position. One of the reasons you're in a better position is financing is so cheap, right? I had a, I had a couple of investors here recently get in investment loans with a three on them which I think is crazy because I remember several loans having a seven on them when I started. So uh, if, you can, if you can leverage a 30-year loan or a 15-year loan at 3% or 3.5 or 3.8 or whatever, and you're earning five or 6%, that's called positive carry. And uh, frankly, Wall Street is built on positive carry. So uh, it's pretty interesting to think that you could get a completely remodeled property, get financing below the return and, and you know, be in a, in a tremendous shape, let alone with tax advantages and you know somebody else buying your asset and, and all of that stuff. One of the things I'm most proud of, because uh, again, I created this model from scratch, it fits who I am and what I wanna do. It probably is not the most profitable way to do it. In fact, I know it's not, but hey, it's my thing, is I take the time to fill them up, right? I don't sell them vacant and say, hey, congratulations, it's up to you to stick a tenant in, right? I'm, I'm trying to de-risk the situation for investors. So I take the time, my team does it, they run through my, my, you know, my criteria and um, we stick a tenant in, right? We don't even open escrow until the tenant is moved in and, and paying rent because I want my buyer to have cash flow the day they buy it. I don't want them to sit there for 30 or 45 days going, you know, what's going on. Uh, I want the rent to be known because it's, it's important for me to run, have you run your calculations like I talk about in the course all the time so you can compare your deals. And again, the capital improvements are done. You know, you can't guarantee anything in this life, but my hope is that you've got three years of no capital investments. You'll still have maintenance and things breaking because tenants did this or that. But right, you'll have new floors, new paints, new kitchens, new baths, um, you know, and, and where, where, you know, where relevant new windows and new cooling and heating and right. So the big things are done and yeah, sure. But you know, plumbing stuff could happen. Somebody, you know, the sewer line could break. All those things are always possible. Uh, but hopefully uh, the capital improvements are done at least in the majority of manner. And again, you're, you're financing them, right? Cause you're getting it fully done instead of doing these yourself. 
Um, you know, you got to know that time and in, in, in the repair job are risky, right? So how, how do you do what you do? And, you know, time is often the greatest um, uh, constraint for people that buy my stuff, right? Well, you can go back and listen to Matthew talk about how he bought six of them. He had no time, right? He was a senior executive at a technology company and uh, all over the world and, you know, 100 hour weeks. But he knew he wanted to have a better financial future. Uh, so he went ahead and bought six turnkey solutions, uh, houses, and I think a, a duplex or a triplex or two. So, uh, and again, if time's the problem, great. That's, this is what this, uh, you know, pride of ownership rentals are all about. And again, I think it's a great use of time, right? Talking about leverage of time and, and all of those things. And, uh, you know, we, we off, I often sell stuff to people that maybe they do one drive with me uh, to see what's going on, see what stuff looks like. I've had people buy sight unseen. Uh, both from the East Coast and other places across the U.S., which is really cool. We do all these walkthrough videos, befores, afters. We hide nothing, we, you know, so you can always go back and look through those. Uh, and again, if you have a busy life, but you know you want uh, an asset that somebody else pays for with interest rates under 4%, this is a great time to be a landlord and, and buy uh, pride of ownership rentals, in my opinion. Again, property management's in place. Uh, you're free to change, uh, absolutely. Uh, but I, again, back to getting you cash flow day one, it's already engaged, property management's in the works, uh, and uh, you can leverage the strength of being part of uh, the company that I'm at. Uh, I have no incentive, so if you want to change, go for it. Uh, but again, the property management's in place, the lease is signed, you know, all of that stuff is ready to rock and roll. And the most important thing for me is you can calculate your estimated return with some pretty good certainty because, you know, very early on, I give you a range of the purchase price, you know, 170, 175. I go rents are going to be 1150 to 1250. And you could go in and do your own calculations and see if this deal makes sense for you. And again, if you can get lower interest rates and get positive carry, uh, it's just a really good time. Uh, but again, this is, this is important to me is to sell these units full uh, so that anybody buying them could really do their own calculations and get that return day one. Uh, so again, back to all the capital improvements being done. You're not buying a cheap property where you're going to have to band-aid it over and over and over and just limp by with zero cash flow. Um, you're going to have significantly reduced capital expenses uh, the first three to five years uh, because again, you have a new kitchen, you have a new bath, you've got new flooring. Uh, yes, you'll have operating expenses and you could have tenant issues and all of that, certainly. Uh, but, you know, hopefully at least most of the capital improvements have been done and you, you can just bank, you know, put a little bit of reserve away every month and be ready for them when they come. In the end, you're saving time, you're saving cash, and you've started your journey. I can't tell you how many people have, have already told me, and they've only bought one of mine, and they're like, God, I've been looking, I've been looking, I, you know, I looked out of state, I looked here, I looked there. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm happy uh, with what we got. I can get the return. You, you got the, the lease amount we wanted. And um, really exciting to see the closing statement where they get partial rent credit, they get the deposit. Uh, and, um, you know, to save time and cash for folks is, is a great feeling. So at the end, this is, um, you know, what I want to talk about. Pride of ownership rentals are awesome. It's an important part of uh, what we're doing. We're both helping neighborhoods and tenants. We're also helping investors, you know, get started. It's, it's pretty cool. Um, so do me a favor. If you're watching this still, hit that subscribe button. Also, if you're, uh, you know, have different Facebook groups and the like, share this video. I think more and more people need to hear about Pride of Ownership Rentals or turnkeys. Um, you know, it's, it's an important part of the one rental at a time story as we continue to grow uh, and learn and educate. And uh, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, leave me a comment, ask a question, reach out to me. H have a great day, everybody. All right, take care.